hello, uh, my name is Dee, I'm the manager of Sundial House Service, based in Dublin 8. Um, I suppose just to describe a little bit about the need for the service and where it came from. Um, the Homeless Agency in 2003 commissioned a piece of research to, into street drinkers in Dublin and the need arose from, I suppose, the findings from that research that there was a need to work with people who had addiction issues um, and to take them in and work with them in a low threshold way. Um, it wasn't easy getting the service open, it took five years, um, but I suppose during that five years there was a joint commissioning approach and Paul Ireland worked collaboratively with the health agencies and the housing departments. Um, and during that time common goals were established for all partners and De Paul Ireland was committed to this approach. What does living in Sundial, what does it mean to you? It means I'm safe, I'm happy and if I want to mix with anybody, I can do that. So you have friends here? Hi, yeah. yeah. Do you like living here in Sunda? Do you like living here in Sunda? You know, you can't get better. I've never been in a better place. So this is Sundial House. We have a fob system in operation here. Every resident here has a key fob and they can come and go as they please. It's 24 hours access, but we do like them to come home at a reasonable hour and staff will always know when they come in and when they exit. So it's a simple fob operation. Swipe here and they have access to the project. So we have an alcohol management system at Sundial House and it's a series of assessments and plans that are drawn up by the key workers and the residents. And all the alcohol that's given in and given out is all logged in these two books and we have the points on the wall to show the units of alcohol that service users will consume on a daily basis. So the, the, the plan is drawn up in conjunction with the key worker and all alcohol is stored here. It's a glass-free project, so safe, health and safety is, is important as well. And um, There's no alcohol served during the night between the hours of 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. It's to encourage everyone to get a good night's sleep. So this is the nurse's station at Sundial House. I'll bring you in. The nurse is stationed here Monday to Friday and it's 9 to 5. She takes care of all the dressings, bandages, there's also a safety net clinic that happens here every Wednesday. So I'll, I'll show you. So this is uh, one, of the, one of the bedrooms at Sundial House. It's one of the ladies' bedrooms. Come in there and have a look around. So all rooms are on SWE. I'll just show you the bathroom. It's a single room, so quite nice. I'm here for you today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the best house I've ever lived in. <laughs> so where, where were you before from that house? How did you become Old house. homeless? Didn't like it. And I was in Abbey Street. I was in Harker Street. Then I was on the street for a couple of hours, a couple of years, lived in the tent in front of house. Hard life. Yeah. And I went through hell and back. But now this is the best place. <laughs> so you, you like it here at Sunday? I love it. And we were like the key worker, me, the man to rain. He got the uh, social worker, me, youngest kids, got in contact and really helped me have a great conversation with her. And again, to see the kids after 10 years. Are there any 
So we're great elves and activities. They're great in here for that. And we go fishing, bowling, cinemas, the farms. And we go to the seaside and all that stuff. So this is the dining hall at Sundial House. Um, it's open in the morning from about six o'clock and it closes in in the evening about half eight. There's a breakfast sitting, a lunch, there's um, two dinner sittings and then in the evening residents have access to soup and sandwiches. So it's open nearly all of the time. Um, most, most people come down here for, for most meals and all the meals are recorded by the catering team just to make sure that you can eat, getting good nutrition and good hydration. So this is one of the TV rooms in Sundal House. We have common rooms on every floor and this is the most used floor, so it's floor two. And a lot of residents come here in the morning for an activity for breakfast club and then to watch TV in the day and during the evening. This is it. So this is another one of the common rooms and it's used as a TV room and for activities in the, in the evening. Um, pool room and it's a beauty table. Okay, I'm Michael, uh, I'm a volunteer here in Sundial House in Dublin and uh, I do uh, woodwork classes with uh, some of the service users such as Peter here. Peter um, has put together a lot of these picture frames and uh, he's also an artist and he uh, is now varnishing this picture frame. Um, we also have done a lot of uh, work like making bookshelves and we're going to make some uh, plant boxes for the garden which we have. Uh, So my name is Ed Hannan, I'm the Deputy Manager of Sundal House. Um, Sundal House is a housing project that was set up in 2008. Um, the reason it was set up initially was to meet the need of people who would be entrenched to long-term street drinkers. Um, there was a project before here called Angel Street that was an emergency shelter for entrenched street drinkers. And they found obviously as, as, people, as the age group and the age profile got higher, the more and more people um, needed a higher level of support. So Sundial House was set up with that in mind. Um, so we'd have 24 hour cover here. There's a nurse on site five days a week. We have 127 hours of carer support for residents because a lot of residents would need support around their personal care and the maintenance of their rooms. And that kind of one-on-one -on -one support would be needed by, by a few of our residents. The residents here, we, we manage a lot of aspects of the, of the, life, of the lifestyle um, to minimize the damage that alcohol is causing to the systems. Uh, for example, every resident here would be on an alcohol management plan. So the idea behind an alcohol management plan is that before these were in place, you have a situation with residents quite a lot where they would binge drink heavily on a say Wednesday or Thursday, and then would spend, you know, they'd end up going through DTs every week, and the physical effect that had on them was obviously huge. So we, we sit down with each resident and we kind of we work out a different alcohol management plan so we can spread it out over seven days. Um, it's obviously kind of budgeting as well. So bringing in the alcohol management plans have brought a lot of changes to the shelter and to, to the community in the sense that residents are drinking consistently over a week. So there's more, they're, they're more able to like, liaise with health services and they're more able to liaise with the life skills and kind of holistic stuff that we have going on in Sundial all the time. Um, the violent or kind of aggressive or behavioural issues are reduced because of the kind of consistent level and obviously the physical damage that people are causing to themselves by going through withdrawal every week. Um, but not going through withdrawal every week, every week means that they, that there's a lot, a lot of improvements in, in the kind of nutrition, as I said, personal care, a lot of aspects of a resident's lives. Every resident here would have a key worker, so each person has an individual key worker they'd have, then a support plan based around their needs to be drawn up with the key worker. So the support plan will cover a lot of different areas of the care, it will cover personal care, nutrition, budgeting, health, um, social well-being, engagement in the life skills, and a lot obviously to do with people's families too. Uh, as a big part of Sundial House too is getting our residents' families involved in their, in their, in their care plans and in their care. Um, 
all the residents here will be in touch with their families and it is nice to see, I think it's good for the families that they can see that the people that they care about are being looked after, people that they obviously for whatever reason they, they weren't able to manage the behaviours themselves. But I think for a lot of people it's it's like a sigh of relief for them when the resident moves in here because they know they're not going to be out drinking in the street, they know they're not going to be in and out of different shelters and different services and they know we're going to work with them on site here, that we, we don't exclude people, we work with the behaviours. So we, people, do, you know, people are mostly in house. Our residents, for the large part, would drink on site. They wouldn't drink in the area surrounding the shelter. So it's good for the local community too. Um, the people aren't drinking on the streets, and the antisocial behaviour that comes with that, and obviously the vulnerability that that poses for a lot of our residents if they would be, you know, more more vulnerable out on the street to getting attacked. Um, so yeah, each, so the families, you can see with families when residents move in here, they, they, they're delighted that people are actually being looked after. Um, our residents can stay here indefinitely. Uh, this is a bed for life, um, because that's the, that's the long-term housing aspect of it. We have a huge team of volunteers here, which is excellent, that engage the residents. Obviously staff quite busy here with managing the alcohol, managing budgeting, managing medication, personal care and health and safety stuff that obviously they unfortunately probably haven't got as enough time as they would like to sit down one to one with residents. So that's where the volunteers come in very handy. Um, one of the main things that would happen here every day, Monday to Friday, would be a breakfast club. Um, the idea with that was to get the residents get to meet together earlier in the day. So what I see as being one of the very positive points of Sundown House is our residents obviously with a low threshold approach to them, our residents that we work with, these would be people a lot of times who have behaviour problems. Um, and would have in the past been excluded from a lot of services and uh, wouldn't be allowed to engage with services because of the alcohol use and would have slept out on the street and um, would have been engaged in the only in emergency services very late at night in Dublin we used to have an, a system called a night bus which used to go and collect people very late at night and bring them to shelters um, but it's, it's very important obviously for the local area and the local community um, that, that we're here because it has reduced the level of street drinking and anti-social behaviour in the area we would meet with community groups we have a, a community guard that would be a police officer that's linked to the shelter. So we would we would talk to him, we'd ring him if we have any issues, if we think anything is going to become an issue. If we have started noticing any antisocial behaviour, he can come in sometimes and all he needs to do is say one thing and it kind of can calm down entirely. Um, I would be like obviously linked in quite closely with the Dunham City Council and local TDs.